folks, thank you for joining me on the Perry Stone YouTube channel. I have a thought and a very strange story that I want to share with you, and I've called this, Are You Flirting with Demons? If this story had come to me by someone who'd been in church most of their life or just a casual person who was a church attender, I'd have said, wow, that's interesting. It came from a man with a heavy academic degrees who is involved in technology. And a very, very smart man. Now, this was many years ago, but I want you to hear this really rather amazing yet crazy story he shared with me. All right. He lived in a West Coast city prior to moving to a very a much smaller town in the area of South Carolina. He had been involved with what is called the New Age Movement. He had been involved with some occult activity. And uh, he actually had tapped into the occult activity and the demonic realm in order to actually destroy his wife. Now, this is way before he was a Christian, of course. And I won't go into the detail of what he did there. He had actually seen demonic spirits. He had seen into the spirit realm, in other words. And as we began to talk about his life and what he had learned and what he experienced, he said something to me I will never forget. He said, when I was living in California in a major city, I would see out of the corner of my eye these spirits. And he said, I'm going to describe them to you as very large, almost ape-like creatures that are bent over. He said, they're very large and very hideous looking. But he said, I didn't see them all the time, but occasionally I did because it was the realm I was operating in at the time. He said, now, before I became a believer in Christ, I moved to South Carolina and I noticed that the spirits in this area were much smaller, but they looked like little imps or we would say little monkeys. And he's trying to, his best to describe to me with his human language, which he said, it's impossible to describe them. I'm trying to do the best I can. But he said they would like sit on people's shoulder and they would whisper things. And you could see the confusion or the anger or maybe a temptation come on someone when this happened. So I asked him a question. I said, well, do you have any, any idea why that in larger cities, they seem to have more authority? They're larger, they're more powerful. But in rural areas, they're smaller and don't seem to have the same level of authority. He said, oh, I can tell you that. 100%. And here's what he said. He said, demonic spirits feed off of the flesh. Now, not that they're chewing on your fleshly body, but in the New Testament, the word flesh is the carnal person, the fleshly person, or the appetites and desires to follow the flesh, fleshly things, adultery, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing, murder, all these things that are listed in the Bible that are works of the flesh. And he says, what happens is that in the cities, there is much more of this taking place. There's so much more of this uh, feeding the flesh and feeding the sins of the flesh. So they grow larger and with more power. However, on the uh, East Coast of the United States, in the smaller towns, there's more churches, more gospel, more preaching, more teaching. And so it puts a, the preaching of the gospel, the receptivity of the gospel, the belief of God's word puts a limitation on the, their authority and their power level. Now we do know that demons have different levels of authority because the Bible says that when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, then he will try to return and bring with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. We know that in Ephesians 6 and 12, Paul talks about principalities, which are the stronger spirits ruling over nations, empires, and providences. Then he talks about the powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in heavenly places. So just like that we have in the military, the generals and the colonels and the, and, and the sergeants and the private first class or whatever rank of the military, Material you want to speak about. It's the same thing in the realm of angels, archangels. Michael is an archangel, seraphim, cherubim, living creatures. There's levels of rank. And so I want to share this with you to tell you the significance of cutting off the enemy's ability to feed from you or feed off of you with the desires or with the works of your flesh. So I, I made a kind of a joke with this guy. Of course, warfare is not a joke and these spirits are not a joke. But I said to him, so what you're saying is that if we live in righteousness, follow the word of God and try to prevent ourselves from sinning by restraining and disciplining ourselves, we can starve the enemy. He laughed out loud. He said, I've never thought of it that way. But he said, there 
kind of is a spiritual truth to be found there. So the, th the reason that you don't want to deal, you know, flirt with spirits or flirt with the flesh is Samson is the example. Samson flirted with Delilah to the point that he let his guard down and she eventually was able to get the secret of his anointing, which was his Nazarite vow and his Nazarite covenant. So what I want to say to you is this, whatever you have to do to follow the Lord, whatever you have to do, sometimes you have to leave the job that you're working at. Sometimes you have to change locations. Sometimes you have to change friendships. Sometimes you have to add strong spiritual people and drop other people. Whatever you have to do to feed the Holy Spirit and feed the things of God and do the things that are right, whatever you have to do, do that because your righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit that you will receive will be well worth it. So that's a little mini note. I hope it's an encouragement to you. Please Click the, uh, the like, the thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so that we can continue bringing you these what I call mini nuggets, M-I-N-I, -I, mini nuggets in the days ahead. We have something special. Watch the entire rest of this video. You might be interested in what I'm about to show you in a moment. Believers that have served Christ for many years are suddenly hitting spiritual roadblocks, heavens that seem like they're made of brass and many other hindrances they have never before encountered. With his time running short, Satan is releasing new levels of temptation and bizarre spiritual warfare in believers' families, churches, and thought life. How is the enemy sneaking through the protective hedge of armor causing distractions and defeat? All Satan needs is just a crack in any part of your six-piece armor to slip into a situation and initiate aggressive warfare. Perry Stone's new book, There is a Crack in Your Armor, is a timely read for all believers. Revelation from God's Word, along with Perry's insight from 36 years of ministry and over 80,000 hours of Bible study merge in this book to bring you a true manifesto on the inside strategies of the adversary and the methods of dealing with strange spiritual conflicts. Key subjects in this book include inheriting your ancestors' demons, winning battles in public but losing battles in private, breaking the spirits of cutting and suicide, the danger of falling upon your own sword, how to mend the cracks in broken vessels, it's not the devil, it's you and reversing a self-curse, what happens when an offense puts a crack in your shield, getting back your mind when you are at wit's end, seven common factors that will wear down your spiritual strength, this book is part of package offer ARM 112. Along with this new book, Perry is offering the DVD teaching, Blood Moons Rising and the Passover Patterns. Perry began disclosing the significance of blood moons back in 1996 during Jerusalem's 3000th anniversary. There's much clamor concerning interpreting these cosmic prodigies. After much Hebraic research, Perry saw two important prophecies that must occur if these lunar eclipses are truly the signs mentioned by the prophet Joel. Recorded live, this teaching will explain how God uses cosmic signs and the two events other teachers have missed that must accompany these blood moons over the course of the next 15 months for this to be part of the prediction in Joel chapter 2. Perry's new landmark book, There is a Crack in Your Armor, and the latest prophetic DVD, Blood Moons Rising and the Passover Patterns, are available now for a donation of just $30 or more. Call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. Or order online at perrystone.org. You may also send your donation of $30 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Request offer ARM 112 when writing or calling. The book and DVD package are available only through the ministry of Perry Stone, and your donation helps keep Manifest On in your area. We look forward to hearing from you soon.